Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. Welcome to St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Columbia, Tennessee. We're located at 405 Church Street in Columbia. And we are just grateful to have another opportunity to praise God with you. Praise God for whom all blessings flow.
thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Sister Robbie, for leading us in prayer. And your family and you are in our thoughts and prayer, Sister Kay, and the loss of your nephew. And we praise God that your niece is doing better. We praise God that Sister Nikki Gordon is home and doing better. You know, God is an awesome God. Well, the Wallace is good to see you. We thank God that he's delivered you once again. Amen. Sister Justine, welcome this morning. Even though it's just a handful of us, the praise team, our technicians, musicians, and myself, the word says where two or three are gathered in his name, everything will be all right. And we just come to have a hallelujah good time in the Lord. Amen. A scripture reading for this Lord's morning comes from the New Testament readings of John. John, the fourth chapter, verses 27 through 30 and verses 39 through 42. John 4, 27 through 30, and 39 through 42. Reading from the NIV translation, the word of God reads, Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, What do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of town and made their way towards him. And verse 39 through 40, many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, no longer do we believe just because of what you said. Now we believe for ourselves. Hallelujah. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. God's word for God's people. And the people of God said, Amen. From all that dwells below the skies.
soul and in thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commands hang all the laws and the prophets. Thank you. 
for all you've done for us. All you are doing with us. And all that you will do. God, we can't thank you enough. You've been so good to us. You've blessed us in spite of our sins. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your grace by which we are saved. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. And Lord, we just can't thank you. God, you blessed us during those moments when we didn't even know to praise you. You've taken care of us when we couldn't even take care of ourselves. You've blessed us right in the face of a global pandemic. And Lord, we say thank you. Lord, that we're not among the numbers that have been called on. And God, we still got breath in our bodies. We can still lift our hands and praise and open up our lips to say thank you. God, we just praise your name. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that you willingly laid down your life for us. And now, Lord, I need you to speak what you will have the people to hear. Speak what you will have me to say Use me, Lord, as an instrument. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. With power and authority, I pray now. In your son Jesus' name, amen. And amen. By now, St. Paul, you know that when I'm out walking, or I'm driving along, that most of the time I'm listening to gospel radio. And I'll admit, Brother Richard, there sometimes I listen to some other stations. But this past week, the song that caught my attention was by James Fortune, Nobody Like Jesus. And I come to say this morning, there's nobody like Jesus. And if James Fortune was here today, he'd probably say something like, let me tell you about a man who knows all my thoughts but still loves me. Hallelujah, somebody. Let me introduce you to a man who will never bring my past up again. He's my healer, my savior, my way maker, my joy, my provider, my strong tower, and he gave his life for me. His name is Jesus. Well, can somebody shout Jesus? Sweet Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus in all of the history past, in all of the times to come. There's no one person who stands alone. He is above all others. His name is high over all names. And there is salvation in no other name but Jesus. His name is Jesus. And folk, I stand this morning as a witness. There's nobody like Jesus. Folk, you can travel wherever you desire. And some of us have traveled a long way. You can investigate all of the religious sects of the world. And at the end of your travels and your investigations, you will have to conclude 
that there is nobody like Jesus. Well, Can we get an amen, y'all? Well. As of year 2018, there were approximately 7.594 billion people living on earth. And if we go back from the beginning of time until today, that would mean more than 85 billion people have lived on the earth. And the truth is, there's never been anyone, there will never be anyone, there's not anyone like Jesus. His name is higher than the highest, greater than the greatest, mightier than the mightiest, and lovelier, lovelier than the loveliest. He was always, always is, and always will be. He's unmovable, unchangeable, undefeatable. There's nobody like Jesus. In John chapter 4, we find the story of Jesus talking with a Samaritan woman at the well. In your spare time, go back and read John 1 through 42. In the text, Jesus is traveling, and during his travel, he had to pass through Samaria. And when he came to a town in Samaria, he stopped near a plot of ground that jo Jacob had given to his son Joseph. And on this plot, of land. There was a well. Jesus was tired from his journey and the man in Jesus had to sit down and rest. Remember that Jesus was 100% man and 100% divine and in his humanity even Jesus had to rest. Every now and then we need to take a break. Yes. Every now and then we need to take a rest. Yes. Jesus' disciples had gone ahead in the town to buy food. And as Jesus sat there by the well, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. The, the scripture says it was high noon. The hottest time of day. But this woman came at high noon to draw water. And as she was drawing water, she heard a voice that said, Will you give me a drink? And when she turned around, she saw Jesus. She didn't know who Jesus was. She knew that he was a Jewish man. And she was a Samaritan woman. Well, the Samaritans were considered second class citizens. And they didn't speak to Jews in public. Not only was she a Samaritan, but she was also a woman. And in that day, that meant she had two strikes well, against her. Well, and she said, when Jesus asked for a drink and, and the woman said, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan yes, woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews don't associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift and who he is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Yes, sir. sir, the woman said, you don't even have anything to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well? He even drank from it himself along with his sons and his livestock. Referring to the well water, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks from this well, from this water, will be thirsty again. 
But whoever drinks from the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Not understanding what Jesus was saying, the woman replied, Sir, give me this water so I won't have to get thirsty and have to keep coming to this well to draw the water. And remember I said it was noon, the hottest time of the day. And some theologians say this woman was the father of two well in the town. They considered her low life. She came to the well at noon, the hottest part of the day, to draw waters while others were inside taking a nap and waiting for the day to cool down so that the men could go back to work and the women would gather at the well to draw water and talk about everything there was to talk about. Somebody understand. See, we go to barber shops just to then. We go to beauty salons, ladies. And we know a whole lot of gossip goes on where the well was the gossiping point of Samaria. And the women would all come to the well. And sometimes uh, Phil Oakland says their main subject was the woman who was at the well with Jesus. Uh -huh. Or they considered her a low life and that she didn't have uh, any principles. Somebody here understand. We ain't always been perfect. And we know some folk that have talked about us. Amen. And we know what it feels like to have folk to talk about you. Sometimes you can be the best Christian around, but folk are still will talk about you. Amen, somebody. People will remember every little thing that you ever thought of. They won't even recognize who you are now. They'll bring up the past. And this woman would come to the well when there was nobody there to talk about her. And she asked Jesus to give her that water, thinking that if she got that water, she wouldn't have to come to the well again. And Jesus said to the woman, well, go get your husband and bring him back. And the woman said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right. You don't have a husband. The fact is you had five husbands. And the man you have now is not your husband. What you said is quite true. Can you just think about how folk talked about her. There were some folk that were jealous of her. Where well, I go to church every Sunday. I'm in the synagogue. I pay my tithes like I ought to. I pray, but I can't find a mate. And she's in five already. Can you imagine how they talk about this woman? And the woman said to Jesus, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus replied, believe me, there is a time coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know because salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and now has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. That brings me to the question, what's your worship life like? How are 
Are you worshiping? Are you worshiping in spirit and in truth? Are you led by the Holy Spirit? Or are you led by your own convictions? Amen. The woman said to Jesus, I know the Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus then said, I, the one you are speaking to, I am he. And after some time, the disciples returned with the food. And they were surprised to see Jesus in a conversation with a Samaritan woman. And they were talking with Jesus, uh, dismissing the woman. Uh, they didn't think uh, she was worthy of Jesus' presence. Uh, and they dismissed her. And they began to urge Jesus to eat. Uh, and while they were talking to Jesus, the woman went back into town and told everybody about a man uh, who knew everything uh, about her. She said, come and see a man that told me everything that I ever did. And James Fortune said, and still he loved me. That shouted news because the Lord still loves us. Although we ain't always been the folk that we are now, but yet Jesus loves us. And the word said many of the Samaritans believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. But she didn't want them to accept the Lord just on her testimony. And she said to the Samaritans, come see a man that told me everything I ever did. She even questioned, could this be? The Messiah. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus and they heard what Jesus had to say, they urged him to stay with them. And the word said Jesus stopped his travel and stayed with them for two more days. And because of his words, they became believers. They said to the woman, we don't, we no longer have to go off of your testimony because we heard with our own ears and we know for ourselves. And that's good news, y'all. You don't have to shout off of somebody else's blessing. That's all right, but you can shout because God's been good to you. You can shout because you got a testimony of your own. You can shout because he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. You can shout because he's put food on your table and kept a shelter over your head. You don't have to shout just because he's been good to somebody else. You can shout, Sister Jocelyn, because God's been good to you. I tell you, there's nobody like Jesus. Isaiah prophesied about the coming Messiah. And Isaiah said, unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called a wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace for God stop by this morning to say there's nobody like Jesus. Psalm 89 and 6 asks the question, for who in the heaven can be compared unto the 
the Lord who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord. Church, there is no one like the Lord that we serve. He's more than a king. He's the king of kings. He's more than just the Lord. He's the Lord of lords. Not only is there nobody like Jesus, there's no other name like the name of Jesus. Philippians 2 and 9, 2 and 9 through 10 says, Wherefore God also has my highly exalted him and given him a name which is above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. This means that Jesus' his name is above all. Jesus, he's above cancer, above heart trouble, above diabetes, above strokes, above arthritis, above blood, high blood pressure, and every other disease known to humanity, including a COVID-19 virus. Don't you know if the Lord has stared down pandemics in the past, he's going to do it again. The name of Jesus is above all of the nasty and ugly politics. The name of Jesus is above systemic racism. The name of Jesus is above road police officers and the shooting death of dead more unarmed black men and women. The name of Jesus is above poverty. The name of Jesus is above hate, fear, and doubt. The name of Jesus is above every religion upon the earth. And in the name of Jesus, again, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And one day, every corrupt and wicked leader that has ever upon the earth will have to bow before the Lord. One day, every man, woman, boy, or girl will have to bow before the Lord. And the word said, one day the Lord is coming back. And on that day, the dead in Christ shall rise. in the air and hear our voice and well done thy good and faithful servant now move on up a little higher and share in your master's joy I tell you there ain't no other name that can save you but Jesus there's nobody like Jesus yes. in church Speaking of a dying world, well. in this nation alone, over 181,000 people yes, sir. have died yes. of this COVID virus. Yes, sir. And all of us know somebody that's been impacted mm -hmm. by this virus. But yet we'll yell out, amen, somebody. Oh, that's shouting news. Because God has spared you. And there are reports this morning that by September the 19th, only a couple of weeks from today, that over 200,000 people in the U.S. would have died from this virus. 
And by December, over 300,000 people. Yeah. That reflects an increase of approximately 2,000 people a day. And all the leaders of this nation can say, it is what it is. Aren't you glad this morning that you serve a Savior that's got more to say than it is what it is? And then he blames everything happening under his administration on the Democrats. Well, it's got to be the Democrats. It can't be nobody else. What's happening today reminds me of what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 8 when the Israelites wanted an earthly king. Samuel had appointed his son's judges over the people and they were not doing what God had required of them to do. Instead, they turned to politics. They compromised and accepted bribes of perverted justice rather than upholding the righteousness of God. And when you compare what took place in the book of 1 Samuel, then think about what's happening in our nation today. Aren't you glad this morning that there's nobody like Jesus? That's why the hymn writer could write, My faith looks up to the Thy Lamb of Calvary, Savior, Divine. I tell you, there's nobody like Jesus. Who else you know except Jesus was born in a manger, lived 33 and a half years, was crucified on the cross, and buried in a borrowed grave. But three days later, he rose up from the grave victoriously. Then he walked among humanity for another 40 days and ascended back into the heaven where today he sits on the right hand of God the Father. Jesus didn't need a grave of his own. He just borrowed it up for three days because he'd already said this temple will be destroyed but three days I will rise again that's good news for us because somebody might be down right now but in the name of Jesus you will rise again Hell didn't have enough power to keep Jesus in the grave. The sealed tomb couldn't keep him in the grave. Just as Jesus was destined to go to the grave, thank God he was destined to walk out of the grave. The grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't hold him. The Roman soldiers couldn't stop him. I tell you, there's nobody like Jesus. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end, who lived forever and will never die again. He'll never see another spirit. He'll never see another spike or cross. He will never be bruised or pierced again. All of the blood he will ever shed has already been shed. Jesus has already paid the price. Salvation has been purchased. His death was once and now he lives forever. He said to John on the Isle of Patmos, I am Jesus was saying, I'm everything from 
Savior Jesus. He's the one that's been walking with you every step of the journey. He's the one that's been looking over you when you couldn't take care of yourself. He's the one that has healing hands. He's still the Savior of the world. Just trust him. Come to Jesus. Just as you are. And he will take care of you. If you need to speak with any of us here at the church, just call us in the church office. 931 388 40 Be with us now.